Welcome to the week one edition of our prep football video previews um, to kick off the 2010 football season. Um, I'm Gaston Gazette Sports Editor Gabe Wisnett, joined by Richard Walker, Philip Gardner. Um, this week we're just going to kind of give a quick preview of the conferences. Um, the area conferences seem to be a little more wide open than they have been in past years. Um, a lot of parity, if you will, teams that are kind of balanced from top to bottom. You know, a lot of returning players um, on some teams, some teams not as much. Um, Richard, to start off with the Mega Seven um, League, East Gaston's in. You know, what's it going to take for them to, to make some strides in that league, and uh, you know, maybe maybe push for you know a better playoff positioning going forward. Well, as you alluded to, there's a lot of transition in that league. Olympic won it last year, I think, the second conference title in the history of the school. Um, they lost a lot of players, but they do have a good running back and Raheem Jennings back uh, for Olympic. They expect to be good. Coach Barry Shuford used to play at Burns High School in Cleveland County. He was an assistant at Maiden and head coach at Bessemer City, familiar with this area. Um, Catholic had been kind of the dominant team in the, in, the, in the area, in that conference for many years. Had not lost a conference game in several years. Olympic beat them last year. They only have six starters now. Jim Odo has been a really, you know, longest tenured coach, I think, in the state at 37 years this season. So it, it'll be a tall task for East Gaston, particularly with a lot of the, the losses they suffered. Thaddeus Benton was kind of the hub of their offense, in addition to Justin Clark, who moved from wide receiver to quarterback and had a terrific year running the spread offense a year ago. Now they've got to rebuild a little bit. Uh, Colt Crane was, has been the quarterback in the scrimmage, and I'm assuming will start the season at that position. Uh, they got one of the best kickers around in Richard Sigmund, but the hope is can they use him a lot. Um, seven returning starters, but a really wide open conference as, has, as many of us expected. Another interesting tidbit about that league, Waddell, new football coach, uh, Devron Hopper, uh, former Carolina Panther, I believe defensive back. So yeah, a lot of uh, transition and change all around that league. Switching over to the Big South, obviously a lot of our county schools in the Big South. Um, South Point defending state champion um, sitting out there. Uh, Forest View made a ton of strides last year. Crest with a brand new coach. Ashbrook with a brand new coach. Mm -hmm. um, talk about that league a little bit, Phil. I think the Big South is as strong as it's ever been. And this is an historically very strong conference. Uh, great history. We've had state championships, obviously, as recently as last year. South Point having won the title last year uh, with with so many starters back, we was 14 starters back from state championship team. You got to predict them number one in this conference. Uh, but there's a lot of teams that could dethrone them. I think number one, you look at Crest, who's had a very good preseason. They've got 12 starters back, plus a very good kicker, plus they have a new coach. Uh, what kind of in impact can, uh, can Coach Barnes make over at Crest? Uh, you look at Kings Mountain, you look at Forest, you look at Hush, you look at Ashbrook. I can see any of those teams. Uh, being at least second place in that conference. I think everybody picked South Point number one. The coaches picked them number one. We picked them number one. But when you look at our projections, you'll notice that uh, we see this uh, as anybody's conference. We've got Crest and Kings Mountain tied for second. We've got Forestry and Huss tied for fourth after that. And we even considered Ashbrook putting them as high as second place. And so just those projections uh, demonstrate uh, what we feel about this conference. Uh, I was really impressed with Kings Mountain and the Jamboree uh, over at Ashbrook. I've heard lots of good things about Crest. Forest View is always the underrated team. Uh, what did we pick them last year? Fifth or sixth in the league, and they end up having uh, 10 wins, winning their first playoff game in school history, and they, they're coming from a great JV team last year. They'll just preload from there. And, and Huss is another one of those neglected teams. Uh, people just underestimate what they can do. But they might have some of the best skill position players in the conference when we look at John Tavian Hall and, and T.J. Wilson. So I'm really excited about seeing this league this year. And finally, Richard, the uh, Southern Piedmont. Um, talk about that one a little bit. Yeah, it's, it's a league that we picked to go one through six in the order of, of victories. And yet, I know when Phil and I were talking about our predictions, you know, I can see a lot of movement there. The big story, I would say, as we enter the season, the usual suspects, Lincoln and East Lincoln, are at the top of the league, but there's so much momentum and anticipation of the season in charitable ball places. And a lot of it has to center around Thomas Bass, um, one of the players that was at East Caston last year, Mark Ethrad, transferred to charitable in the middle of the school year last year, played on the charitable's baseball team, is now uh, a skilled player option for Thomas Bass. And the fascinating thing about that for charitable is, you know, Terry Whistman, who's one of the best athletes in the county, could be receiver there, but, you know, he's going to commit to sign an ACC basketball scholarship, is not going to play football. But that notwithstanding, there's a lot of excitement in, in Ironman country, and predictably so. Bessemer City loses a lot of people 
Um, Coach Brown, Coach Boone feels like that he's going to have to do more you know, guys going two ways than before, but Jordan Coleman is one of the best players in the county. They've been the best defense statistically in the county the last two years. I expect them to be good. We've got West Lincoln picked to finish next to last in the conference, and they've got the top returning running back from yards perspective in the, in the area in Devin Travis. And then North Lincoln has 14 starters back from a team that wasn't that didn't meet expectations. So, you know, you look at that league and our prediction is that it would be Lincoln, East Lincoln, Cherryville, West City, West Lincoln, and North Lincoln in the specific order. But, you know, I still could – it wouldn't surprise me if you have some deviation from that. But it's going to be awful hard for me to imagine Lincoln and East Lincoln not being the top two teams in that league based on their history and tradition and certainly the players they have now and what they've done recently. That will wrap it up for week one. Um, look for us to take this, uh, to take our video on the road and go out to some schools this year. So we'll do some do some different things with our video, but nevertheless, we should have one every week um, focused on prep football. Uh, be sure to pick up a copy of Wednesday's edition of the Gazette for the prep football uh, prep football preview edition, and uh, we'll see you see you during the season.